So if you click this video, you probably saw Tracy Chapman's performance with Luke Combs at the Grammys. Her performance was absolutely amazing. It brought tears to my eyes. She was glowing. I mean, her skin was shining on my television screen. Tears were flowing out of my eyes. I thought she looked amazing she sounded amazing and it just reminded me that i had this video taking you guys through her entire discography so i wanted to put it out this week so without further ado let's go ahead and dive in hi welcome back to my channel i'm Cher, and today i'm going to be talking about how i became a huge tracy chapman fan and why i think you should give her a listen now let me just jump into it this is what happened it was 2020. I was full of anxiety scrolling through my phone when I ran across this tweet. The best album in 2020 was made in 1988. Now let me preface this with saying during this time I was doing what I like to call musical deep dives. It was my way of passing the time during this weird period that we were all in. I would listen to an artist from their first album until their last. So when I saw this tweet, I knew that Tracy Chapman had to be the next artist that I do this deep dive on. Now, up until this point, I had already heard of a lot of Tracy Chapman's most popular songs. I mean, we have Give Me One Reason, we have Talking About a Revolution, and my personal favorite, and a lot of ours, Fast Car. So I knew she had this incredible voice. I knew she was this incredible storyteller, but I had never really ventured into her music. And so I knew that this was going to be the artist I do my next deep dive on. And let me tell you, it was one of the best decisions I made during that time. Tracy Chapman soon became one of my all time favorite artists. Her music is so lyrically beautiful, but it also touches across all different genres. The other thing I really love about her is her smoky smooth vocals. Her voice has the ability to just touch you. She has such a soulful sound that when you listen to her, you can't help but think of your own life. Okay, so I'm going through this deep dive, right? I'm going through this deep dive. I'm listening to her debut album. I keep going, I keep going, I keep going. And then I hit this song. And it was this song that made me realize that this woman was going to be my favorite artist. And the way that Tracy Chapman wrote this song felt like it came from my heart. And I felt so connected to it, so connected to it lyrically. And the song is Thinking of You. And let me stop thinking. Um, and I remember thinking, like, I didn't think that this would happen again. When any, whenever anybody asks me who my favorite singer is, I always say my favorite singer is Regina Spector. Um, and I remember when I got into her music, I was a teenager, and I never really had that connection to another artist since. And so when I felt this exact feeling happening that I had when I was a teenager. I was like, wow, I didn't know that that could happen again. I do love so many artists, but this is a different experience. It's like a, it's, it's a, it's a connection. It's almost like this artist just becomes a part of you and you just can't stop listening to them. And for a while, all you do is listen to this artist. And that's how I felt like with Tracy Chapman, um, the minute I heard thinking of you, I just knew I was going to be listening to her music for the rest of my life. So I'm going through this deep dive, right? The first album, of course, I listened to is her debut album. Wow, this album absolutely blew me away. I mean, if you were to ask me how I would describe this album, I would just say the word life. And by that, I mean, it just encompasses everything it is about being a human. It's hard to put into words how much this debut album blew me away. I mean, I rarely ever say an album is perfect, but this album really does check that box for me. I mean, I'm telling you, the minute I listened to her debut album, I entered a vortex, which took almost a year to get out of. Not that I wanted to. It was hard to listen to any other artist that I felt such a strong connection to. I mean, this album has songs about begging your lover to forgive you, but it also has songs about challenging the inequities of the world, questioning why things are the way they are, and even fighting for a revolution. It also has the most beautiful love songs, Baby Can I Hold You. <laughs> Baby, can I hold you tonight? 
for you. So as I finish with the debut album and I'm going through this deep dive, the next album I listen to is Crossroads. Crossroads came out in 1989. The album features Chapman's most personal and introspective songs. Um, it has some songs like Sub City and All That You Have Is Your Soul. Some of the highlights for me are songs like Crossroads, Bridges, Freedom Now, which she wrote about Nelson Mandela's life. I absolutely love this song. It reminds me of my childhood having barbecues and running in the grass outside. There's something so free about it. And when she says freedom now, it's just, there's something, she just, she just captures freedom in the song, both lyrically and with all the instruments going on in the background. Everybody's singing. this time, which I feel like is such an empowering song. Um, it's about self-preservation and preserving yourself after a failed relationship, learning how to put yourself first. And then I got to the song, All That You Have Is Your Soul, which really, really, really touched me. There was something about All That You Have Is Your Soul lyrically that just did it for me. It just made me feel like you don't always have to be invested in every single thing. And sometimes you have to take time for yourself because all that you have is your soul and you don't want to, uh, to destroy yourself in the process of always trying to fix everything and think about everything going on in the world. And when the world becomes so overwhelming, it's just a song that reminds you to ground yourself. Because all that you have is your soul. Probably the next day, I click play on Tracy Chapman's third album, Matters of the Heart. Now, Matters of the Heart came out in 1992 and it featured a more polished and upbeat sound is what I've heard it described as. I don't know that I would necessarily say that. So sonically, this album is a bit of a departure from her earlier work. And I found that I didn't necessarily connect to it as much as her first two albums. Um, but it does have some incredible songs that give a commentary on some of the things happening in the world. For example, one of my favorite songs on this album is Bang, Bang, Bang. It's a song that I could talk about all day long. Basically, Tracy Chapman is giving a commentary on gun culture and the cycle that creates it. And it's really interesting because this is a song I actually took time to learn on guitar a little bit. And so I spent a lot of time with this song. And I think when I heard it the first time, I didn't realize how deep of a meaning that this song had. But when Tracy Chapman talked about this album, she said this, which I thought was really interesting and really captures what this entire album is about. She says in the Los Angeles Times, she says in Los Angeles Times, you can't back away and disassociate yourself from the actions of your government or your community. At some point, individuals have to take responsibility for what the large structures that represent them do. The songs are all interwoven because the personal and political isn't that far apart. The love songs on the album aren't necessarily about my own personal life, but the way we relate to other people. In some ways that's affected by politics and social structure and class and race. It's all in one big pot with everything tossed in there together. And I feel like that is such a beautiful way of even talking about Tracy Chapman's music in general. It's all a big pot and that's really what life is. And I feel like as I was listening to the song Bang Bang Bang, it really talked about how gun culture and gun violence isn't just a conversation about gun control. It's also a conversation about the gun violence that we prioritize as, as more important than others. I mean, she has a line in the song where it's like, if he kills his brothers and his sisters and his friends, we'll consider it a favor, we'll consider justice done. And as I was listening to the song, I just felt so connected to it and also challenged by it because it's like, I had to question the media and what they choose to prioritize and how that's related to class and race and that's expected over there but oh my gosh this happened over here and that's what she's talking about in the song how like race class and socioeconomic status affects the people that care about it happening so yeah my favorite songs on this album just to recap are bang 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 open arms which talk about uh opening yourself up to vulnerabilities and matters of the heart so after I listened to Matters of the Heart, which I liked, but not my favorite Tracy Chapman album, I then hit New Beginnings. Now, New Beginnings is an album that came out in 1995. Here's a little bit about it. 
This album included hit songs like Gimme One Reason, which earned Tracy Chapman a Grammy Award for Best Rock Song. I think it's a classic. If you go to any rock jam night, somebody's probably gonna be playing that song. I absolutely love it. Some of my favorite songs on this album are New Beginning, Gimme One Reason, At This Point In My Life, The Promise, and I'm Ready. I really, really love At This Point In My Life because it feels, it's this feeling of giving up but also there's there's a light that comes with giving up where it's like I don't know there's there's something about at this point in my life that I really connected with as someone that struggles with you know mental health challenges or just feeling intense despair uh this the lyrics go at this point in my life I've done many things wrong I don't know if I can do things right and there's something about that that just it just you just feel it you feel everybody's had that feeling before a feeling like i've done so many things wrong i don't even know if i can correct myself then she has a song called the promise which i absolutely love it's a beautiful beautiful love song that could be about anything not just a relationship but it could be about um any not just a romantic relationship but it could be about really anyone that you're close to there's there's such a beauty in this song. I abso absolutely love, love, love The Promise. New Beginning is a song that I think is so relevant at any time, really, because it's just about, can we just start over? Can we just do this over again? Because I, I can picture a better world. You know, it's that kind of song. Really, really love that song as well. Heaven Here on Earth, beautiful intro track. If we think about what's happening in the world today, it's so, so relevant. Let me let me let me read you some of the lyrics. You can look to the stars in search of the answers. Look for God and life on distant planets. Have your faith in the ever after while each of us holds inside the map to the labyrinth and heavens here on earth. We are the spirit, the collective conscience. We create the pain and the suffering and the beauty in this world. Heavens here on earth in our faith in humankind, in our respect for what is earthly, in our unfaltering belief in peace and love and understanding. I've seen and met angels wearing the disguise of ordinary people leading ordinary lives filled with love, compassion, forgiveness, and sacrifice. Heavens in our hearts, in our faith in humankind in our respect for what is earthly, in our unfaltering belief in peace and love and understanding. Look around, believe in what you see. The kingdom is at hand. The promised land is at your feet. We can and will become what we aspire to be if heaven's here on earth. Wow. I'm Ready is a song that I feel so empowered by. It's just, it's I'm ready to start over. I'm ready to just take a hold of my life. I'm ready to acknowledge my self-worth. I'm ready. There's something so, and the way that she sings, I'm ready. There's a sadness to it, but there's also a strength that she's gaining as she sings this song. I love her vocal delivery on the song, I'm Ready. So I keep going through this deep dive, right? And I hit the album, Telling Stories, which came out in 2000. It's a little bit more of a stripped down album. I definitely think just like Matters of the Heart, I don't have as many favorites on this album. It's pleasant to listen to, but I do have a couple standout tracks that I absolutely loved. Uh, telling stories. I really enjoy uh, Tracy Chapman's performance on this song and it's okay. Um, this album was generally well received by critics but did not achieve you know significant attention. Um, next you're gonna hear Let It Rain. This album came out in 2002. Um, it's definitely a departure from Tracy Chapman's usual sound. Um, it's a little bit more bluesy, a little bit more rock, um, but I really, really, really love this album. Actually, this would be on the top two, okay? So I would say, okay, if I were to do, do a ranking, Matters of the Heart and Telling Stories would be towards the bottom. This album would be close to the top. I don't think it'd be way at the top, but I really, there's something so soulful about this album. It has such, such poignant lyrics. It's so poetic to me. And there's a lot of slow songs on this album, but there's songs that just touch you. Um, 
like the song let it rain which i feel like is about letting go of your emotions the way that she captures that in the song is so so stunning so some of the standouts in this album are let it rain you're the one almost is a song that makes me cry every single time it's so beautiful say hallelujah really love that upbeat sound that we get in this song and then Happy, which is another beautiful song. It's just, this is an album I, I listen to in the mornings where I'm just getting up and starting my day. I, I just, it's one of my favorite Tracy Chapman albums, beginning to end. There's something about it that's just the right balance of genres, uh, themes that they captures. It wouldn't be at the top, but it's up there. I absolutely love this album. I definitely recommend you listening to this. Then we get to her 2005 release, where You Live. This album features a mix of acoustic and electric guitar driven tracks. I would agree with that. Um, it's themes that touch on environmentalism and social justice, which I think Tracy Chapman does such a great job on. Um, some of my favorite tracks on this album are Change. It's about changing yourself, which I really love. Uh, Talk to You in 3,000 Miles. 3,000 Miles, I realize, has kind of a deeper meaning. And then we have the song America, which is a bit of a commentary on how this country came about and um, how it was conquered and, you know, that kind of thing. She she talks about Christopher Columbus. Um, you have to keep in mind, you know, Let It Rain and Where You Live came out after 9-11 and there was a lot of themes that I think may have been generated throughout that time about the country and where it's at, similar to after 2016 and a lot of the conversations and even after 2020, a lot of the conversations that were happen happening politically that made their way into the music that we listen to. Um, Where You Live would also be another album that I don't necessarily listen to as much. It is a pretty album, but I would put it in the same category as Telling Stories and Matters of the Heart. Let me get to Bright Futures, her 2008 release. I really, really love this album. I really love this album. Um, people don't talk about it. They should. It's a great album. Um, she has the beautiful song Sing For You, which feels like just a beautiful lullaby almost. Um, <clears throat> I Did It All, which I love. It's a story. It's actually not about her. Like many of her songs, it's a song that's heavy in storytelling. Um, she has For a Dream. And then she has the song Conditional, which I love, which is like owning the fact that love is conditional. It's not, it's okay to want things in your relationship. I love, love, love the lyrics in this song. And then we have the song Thinking of You, which I've already talked about earlier in this video. It absolutely made me fall in love with Tracy Chapman, making her one of my favorite artists of all time. And after listening to her discography, it's so interesting that that was the song, but I feel like there's something journal-like about it. There's something funny. I feel connected to Tracy Chapman when I listen to this song. Then we have Something to See, which is similar to New Beginnings, where it's like, I would just, I want to see this world change. I want to just, I want to see no wars. I want to see no violence. I just love that Tracy Chapman uh, covers these topics so well, so beautifully. And it's not in a way that's overpowering. You know, you have to keep in mind Tracy Chapman does not like to consider herself a social, like an activist in her music. She says she's just a human being that observes things about the world. And she says everybody should be observing things happening politically in our world. Overall, I've, I've really loved this journey that I've been on with listening to all of her music. She has touched me so much. I jokingly call her my aunt because I just feel like this super deep connection with her that I never thought I would have with another artist in this way. I've loved listening to her music nonstop. And I just recommend you listen to her if you want an artist that is an incredible lyricist, but also just a genuine, authentic, beautiful person. And there's something about her that I love, her personality, the fact that she stays out, she's, she's not in it for any attention. In fact, she shies away from attention and it's all about the music and I love that about some of the, my favorite artists. And one of the other reasons I made this video is because people just know her popular songs and her entire catalog is amazing. And I think that if you have been a fan of her through her popular songs, give her entire discography a chance. I definitely would start with her debut and then listen to Crossroads, New Beginnings, and Let It Rain. Those are my probably four top picks. But then also listen to her other albums because it's just so interesting to hear her voice 
and her perspective and how much it's relatable and timely and, and relevant for today. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, there's so much more that I could say about her. Um, just check her out. She's my one of my favorite artists and I absolutely loved learning about her and her story. Uh, thank you so much. I'm Share the Truth. Have a wonderful day.